Welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey. Today's live show is presented by Aura. They offer all-in-one digital safety for you and the whole family thanks to their comprehensive all-in-one tool. Get your free trial. Cancel at any time. 14-day free trial, by the way, at Aura.com slash chat sports. So if you haven't already, check them out. The link will be in the comment section and it will be in the description of today's video. We've got some rumors, we've got some news, we've got some Ross Rebel candidates, and after hours coming up on Rumble, you're, this is going to be our best one yet. But is this Tyron Smith's last year with the Dallas Cowboys? Uh, something we've kind of sort of talked about a little bit in the past, but I think this is going to be a, a very real conversation that will gain steam as the season moves along, mentioned by Brian Broad. That's why we also want to discuss it on today's show. It's also the pinned comment or the pin poll, I should say, on today's YouTube side. Is this his last year? Y for yes or N for no? And people are talking about KD, and yes, Kevin Durant demanded a trade. Uh, fun fact, after today's live show wraps up, we're actually going to be able to redirect this stream right into the chat sports stream, NBA free agency live going on. They will be talking about Kevin Durant. That stream is going to begin for them in a couple of minutes. So hang out for the Cowboys report, then slide right on in to Maine. So is this Tyrant's just last year with the Cowboys? Why for yes and for no? I see yes from Gary Sane and from Billy Walden and Luis Rodriguez and Hunter. No's from Pedro, Eric Folk, CJ DeYoung, Toxic Tom Downey, Burner Accounts. Luis Rodriguez says yes. CJ DeYoung says no. Eric says no. Uh, unbox the Life Girls. That seems really weird, but maybe it's not. I don't know. Why for yes? He says yes. So does Billy. Zeno says yes. No's from Mark. CJ DeYoung. Alumni. And then perhaps in 50-50s from Thexton Third and Tyler Klutz burner account as Jeremy wants to say something again. This is, a, first of all, honoring the uh, the Cowboys pants. I'm wearing the uh, teal green. It does look vaguely seafoam green, which I, I hate teal, that, by Teal the way. green Cowboys it. pants color. I hate it. Um, this is going to be Tyron, Smith, Tyron Smith's last year. It might even be his last year in the NFL, I think. I mean, like, once your body, and like, with any athlete, Tom, you can attest, once it gets to your back, your neck, your back, you know the rest. Yeah. You're kind of done. Your knee or your other stuff. Yes. Uh, uh, other I areas actually, of your body. I actually could see a scenario where if they're like, Ty Tyron, we're going to cut you, goes, I'm just going to retire then. Yeah. I, I, because it's never been about the money for him. I, I, and his I, body's beat up. I could see him retiring after this year and being like, you know what, like he's been an all-time like cowboy lifer. And him being like, you know what, I'm just going to. I'm just going to leave my body where it is. Not you know? that dissimilar in the end from Romo. Well, and you, you see from a couple athletes that kind of prolong their career, like great athletes that prolong their career an extra one to two years, they end up regret regretting it. Dirk came out earlier this year and said he really regrets the last two years with the Mavs because it kind of broke down his body even more than it was. And that's NBA versus, versus, versus football there. So thank you, Jeremy. Though I think I got the NFL daily background on behind me. Who cares, though, I guess, in the end. Is this Tyron Smith's last year? Why for yes and for no? Keep those uh, replies coming. It is 62% saying yes, which feels about right. If I had to pick one way, I'd go, yeah, I think it is. But that's coming up more in depth later on. We'll spend some more time on a Dalton Schultz trade idea that was floated. I'll tear that one apart a little bit. What would you do with Dalton Schultz? Type T for your trade him knowing you then have nothing at tight end. Type P for you'd pay him, knowing that you've got to pay him top five, if not top four, tight end money. Or type K for you just keep him for now, meaning you just run the risk of losing him next year. So yes, in a way, it is like marry, uh, bang, and, uh, you know, end their lives type of deal. So T, P, or K. Which one are you guys going there? Joey says P. Michael says P. Pedro says P. Toxic Tom Downey says keep for now. So does Luis Rod Rodriguez, Armando, CJ DeYoung. Uh, C says, Tom, you should get your own podcast. That's what this is, but thank you. Uh, CJ says, yeah, just with cameras. Uh, Tony says P. Life of Texans says Schultz not even top 20. It's just not true. Uh, Gary Sane says keep. Not that many. Tr no real trades in there. I'll Ramis is trade for more, but keep if not. Okay, so if you get a big offer, that's fair. I get that. 
it, it, in this in this together. scenario, I guess the the kill Mary uh, kill Mary bang mm-hmm. scenario, I'd, I'd I'd bang Dalton Schultz. That's that's the key. I, 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 yeah, I'd I'd go ahead and do that because I mean you got to think next off season you have the draft and free agency. Use it as a one year rental. I mean tight ends aren't the most important position on the mm-hmm. field, and I think we found in the draft you can find great tight ends day two, like. Third round, fourth round, fifth fourth round, round, sixth like, round. Just like Schultz was it? Hopefully Jake Ferguson is. Yeah, too. and I mean, you look at the Ravens, they have Mark Andrews, and they drafted two tight ends in the fourth round who are both impressing so far in training, or in OTAs and minicamp. Mm-hmm. So. Mostly keeps in there. Uh, Unbox says K. Unbox is spamming K, which I appreciate there. Toxic Tom Bernie says, I think that's smart analysis, Jeremy. And Zeno says hi as well. So look at that. It's perfect there. Yeah, CJ Young just called him Chubbs. Uh, which I think is pretty funny. Maybe I'll call you Chubbs when I'm mad at you. Uh, Chugs, though, with with the G's as in beer chugging because on his first day he pounded a beer. Now, knowing the Cowboys probably aren't going to do it because Catboy and whatnot, name a realistic free agent you want to sign as Why Big Jordan, the Panthers fan here at Chat Sports, is is in the comments section as well talking about Golden Matt Golden Corral. I appreciate the meme that has become... Matt, Cor- Matt Corral, it's incredible content. So name a free agent. You guys, oh, CD C- D- Young says he knows that it's Chugs. He called you wrong on purpose. I love it. That's even funnier. I see Nanamakin Sue, Anthony Barr. Jordan says a new GM. Ah, yeah, well, that's a problem there. Toxic Tom is putting in Ryan Nall. It's funny. I appreciate that one. Nanamakin Sue, Anthony Barr, OBJ, Julio Jones, uh... A new GM, Kai Forbath, OBJ, who did have surgery as well. We got a super chat, though, from King Shadow 24 If Tyron Smith retires after this season, is left guard a need again with Tyler Smith likely bumping outside? Need to think right guard is as well with an aging Zach Martin. Zach Martin is 32. He also has two more years under contract uh, with a deal that's not that get out of that's a word at this point. So I, unless Martin regresses this year, probably not going to be too concerned about Zach Martin, but I don't, I don't really know how much longer he's got, which I think is fair. It's probably more of a future problem than it is a, a potential one next year. But in theory, yeah, Tyron retires. Tyler Smith takes over at left tackle and lives up to the Cowboys' hopes and dreams and expectations. And then you go look for a new left guard because left guard's less important than left tackle. Another one from my boy Mark. We should have used that extra draft capital to move up and get a better tight end in the draft. Now we are painted in a corner and forced to pay a player. I don't think the Cowboys view it as they are forced to pay somebody. Um, They weren't going to move up outside of maybe getting Kate Otten, but he went off board immediately in the fourth round, so that one was kind of dead in the water at that point. I would have been on board to go get him, but Cowboys didn't see it as a need. I think what you might see him do is give Schultz this year, And then you could always draft a tight end again next year or sign a veteran at that point. From Mark, Tom for GM, Jeremy for Waterboy. You you down to be Waterboy Chugs? Yeah, go go ahead and get set up right. You're good. You're good. He's trying. I think that's hard to think. Gatorade. Gatorade. The Waterboy bit. I appreciate it there. (laughs) Foosball's the devil, after all, Jeremy. Uh, I appreciate the Super Chat, Mark. It's quite funny. Thank you very much, my friend. Another one from Toxic Tom Downey Burner account. Uh, you hear the Jason get interview with Rich Eisen. Yeah, it was honestly, it was pretty boring. Uh, uh, carrot, because he's a redhead. The carrot, and he's, and he's the clapper. Get it? Yeah. I, that emoji's been used before with Garrett. Uh, I thought he offered nothing of substance. I think he's going to be terrible on broadcast. I just, I think he's, I think he's just going to be a cliche machine. I'm I'm not I'm not sold for that on that front there. That's just mm, I'm not getting on board there. All right, super chat. We'll get to that later on. Pick a wide receiver. I kind of want to save that one from Gary for the mailbag. By the way, uh, pick a receiver. If you have to pick only one to make the Cowboys roster, who would it be? TJ for TJ Vasher. SF for Simi Fayoko. Big shout out to Mark who threw in a dollar again. By the way, thank you, Mark. I appreciate that. Maybe you hit it a little early, but. That's good. Here it is. TJ for TJ Vasher, SF for Simi Fehoko. 
Yeah, yeah, we'll do shots again for $69 in, in Super Chats. No problem. I'm down with that. It's fine. Toxic Tom Downey says, neither I'll go light at receiver. If you had to pick one, if I bully you into making a selection, who would it be? TJ or SF? There's a lot of TJs in there, Jeremy. Unboxing the Life says uh, SF. Jimmy says SF. But Terry and Jeremy, the good Jeremy, Luis, Tony, uh, Joey, Texan, Billy, Jordan, Armando, CJ, all typing in TJs. He's definitely winning on that front. Do you, do you think the What's semi? Up, do you think the semi Fajoko slander is deserved, or do you think it's just like? I don't even think it's slander. Uh, I think it is remembering that he played for Texas Tech and he's a local kid. And he's got the size the Cowboys don't really have. It's excitement about TJ Vasher. Really? Yeah, that's what I think it is. Because I, I, I can. Contrary to that, I think I've heard a lot of TJ or uh, Semi Fajoko slander saying that he's not a bust, but he did he not. Be cut. He did not have a great OTAs. He seemed to bounce back in minicamp. Yeah. So we'll. It's going to be an important pre uh, preseason and training camp. For him. He, it seems like y'all's uh, JJ Arthega Whiteside. Ah, uh, you say that because he went to Stanford. That's mean. But I mean. Lisa was a fifth round pick for second round pick because JJ Ortega Whiteside was. That was rough. I thought he was going to be pretty good, to be honest. A super chat did come in from Mark, so I think that was the one he meant to ask. We'll hit that one real quick here. It's a, it's a fair question. Now we'll, we'll just hit it now, and then we'll save the. Gary, we'll save yours for the mailbag. Because uh, Mark's is a quick one. Can we carry the $23 million over for the 2023 salary cap? Yes. Any money you do not spend, as long as you're meeting the NFL's minimum of spending in terms of salary cap dollars, you can carry over to next year. And the Cowboys have more than met that number already. So, yes, they will be able to carry it over into 2023. All right, important question. I don't know what you just did there, Jeremy. Yeah, you hit the trigger too early. Everyone type L. Pick a 4th of July food to eat. D for hot dogs, B for burgers. Bonus. Is Not a, a sandwich. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Jeremy, if I take away the bun, what is in your hand? A hot dog. Then it's not a sandwich. It's just got if, the, the hot dog in if you, it. If you, if you have a turkey sandwich and you take away the bread, what is it? Turkey. Then it's not a sandwich. You clarify <laughs> sandwich. You, you turn it into a sandwich by adding bread. If there was turkey in between two pieces of bread, what would you call it? That's a turkey sandwich. Because and then if you took the away the bread, the bread, what would it be called? Turkey. So turkey, hot dog, so if you put, turkey sandwich, hot dog sandwich? If, no, if not you, a sandwich. If you put hot dogs in not in not a hot dog bun, if you, if you just put it in bread... Then would it be a sandwich? No idea what that is at that point. That feels like a weird food. <laughs> it's just then would it be a sandwich? No, because the hot dog stands individually on itself what without a, having to be clarified. What, 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 about, what about a banh mi that's in like a... Okay, a it, what? A, it's a... Um, a banh mi? No, a banh mi. It's a Korean... or It's a, a Vietnamese sandwich with a baguette that's sliced and they put everything in there. Look, I'm going to be honest. Is, that, a, is that not a sandwich? I've not... I've not I don't, I don't know what you're talking about, so I, I hot can't Hot dog's a sandwich. That. It's not a sandwich. Hot dog is a who sandwich. Who do you consider the most preeminent ex expert on hot dogs? Uh, who, who would I consider an expert on hot dogs? Joey Chestnut, right? Joey Chestnut? Yeah, yeah fair. I guess. Would you li listen to... If, ah. if Joey Chestnut told you a hot dog's not a sandwich, no. would you listen? Okay, no. so even though he's the most preeminent expert, you would say... Uh, he's I don't not an expert on hot dogs. He eats he, them. That makes him an expert. <laughs> <laughs> that makes him an expert on eating, it's not Joey on Joey Chestnut. Yeah, eating hot dogs. No, hot dog is a sandwich. We're getting way off track. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll bring this back for, for Rumble here. Uh, Stick with me, guys. Hot dog sandwich. Burgers are... Hot dog sandwich. Very, it's, by the way, it's, it's not a sandwich. That's what everyone is saying. So uh, there, There's a lot of Bs for burgers in the comment section. Keep it coming. It is, of course, almost the 4th of July. So pick a 4th of July food to eat. D for hot dogs or B for burgers. Now, if you are ready for us to get today's show started, like the video. We've got about 200 people watching live right now, but not even 50 likes. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Jimmy's Jimmy's pretty funny in the comments. I appreciate that there. Got a Giants fan, Dylan Johnson, says the Eagles and Giants are going to run the East. I mean, I, I like how Dylan's a Giants fan and needs to add the Eagles to add credibility to his argument because he knows that his, his team is just not good. So imagine being a non-Cowboys fan coming into a Cowboys show on a random Thursday in June because you just live that rent-free. It's incredible. All right, like the video. Here's what's coming up 
live on today's Dallas Cowboys report. Latest news and rumors, a, just one Q&A, going lighter because there's NBA free agent stuff that Chugs and I are going to try to help out on here at this point. Also, Dylan, if you're typing in W for yourself, it just makes you look like a colossal loser, to be honest. At least switch over to a burner account and then type it in there. It just looks sad. We'll also break down 10 players on the roster bubble for the Cowboys, 10 of the more notable names. And in the Cowboys report after hours segment today, I've got some absolutely dumb Cowboys ideas. I'm going to end some careers on that video. It's going to be a blast. Make sure you turn, tune in here on the Cowboys report. You're watching the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey, and today's show is protected by Aura. They offer all-in-one digital safety and security with their fantastic online tool. Get your free trial started today at Aura.com slash chat sports. That link will be in the comment section, and it will be in the description of today's video. Let's get into the rumors. First up, is this Tyron Smith's last year? with the Dallas Cowboys. I'm going to go two stars for now, but if I had to go one way or the other, I would probably lean towards yes. And the Cowboys have done things they've done in the past when it comes to contracts. For the first time in what feels like a long time, the Cowboys have not restructured what has been one of the best contracts they've ever given out. He has been incredibly cheap on that, uh, on that standpoint there. But they could have brought his cap hit down. They did not, leaving the door open for potentially moving on next year. The hope, whether it is in 2023 or in 2024 or even hopefully not this year, that Tyler Smith takes over and becomes the team's left tackle of the future. After this season, he's only got one year left under contract plus some void years. Now, in the regular season, when he was healthy, Tyron Smith played pretty well. Two sacks, four hits, five hurries, had a pretty solid... Um, PFF run rate of 90.5, he still continued to play like the good player we've seen in the past. He's been an impactful left tackle. The problem was, I think this is one of the concerns here for the Cowboys, good point to mention it on the Bobby Belt, um, Brian Broaddus podcast, he did not play well against the 49ers. He allowed a sack, two hits, and four hurries. That first group of stats was regular season only, and in one game, Tyron got beat almost as much as he did in, like, on average, five games. It was it was troubling to see Tyron struggle, plus the medical issues, always being hurt, et cetera, et cetera. It is a big-time red flag on that front. Hopefully, just the one thing, you know, was coming off the COVID, and that impacted most players last year for the Cowboys, outside of maybe Randy Gregor. They took a game to get healthy and, and get back to normal film there. But it is a good question mark in terms of what the future holds for Tyron Smith. He is consistently injured. He does not play every single game. He is You can count on him to miss a couple every single year. That is an issue for Dallas. And with the drafting of Tyler Smith in round one, whether it's going to be a he starts seven games, five games, three games at left tackle. I think their plan is to make him the backup at the position, which means at some point he's going to get opportunities to make his impact at left tackle. And especially if Tyler Smith balls out this year, which, fingers crossed, that's a good thing no matter what, it could allow the Cowboys to move on quicker. So I would not be surprised if this time next year, just like they did with Amari Cooper and Demarcus Lawrence, if we have that conversation on Tyron Smith. So is this Tyron's last year with the Dallas Cowboys? Make your predictions for me in the comment section. Y for yes or N for no. This is going to be the pinned comment on today's video. So if the ad break happens to come here on YouTube, perfect timing. Head down to that pin comment and type your Y or your N. Trading away Dalton Schultz. That is next up on here, and I'm going to give it the fake news. Uh, I just I don't see how it makes sense, particularly with what the Athletic actually argued from that standpoint because it was uh, confusing at best from that position. The Athletic pitched the Bucks trading for Dalton Schultz to replace Rob Gronkowski. Now, previous reports, and we're still there, the Schultz and Cowboys are not that close. 
uh, on contract negotiations. And the Cowboys unquestionably need Dalton Schultz this year because they don't have anything going on in terms of trustworthiness and provenness at the tight end position. They, they are dangerously thin behind Schultz. If he were to get hurt, this would maybe be the worst tight end room in the entire NFL, at least bottom tier. Now, you might be wondering what the star meter means. You haven't brought this up in a while. The rumor meter explainer. Uh, this time last year, I said, ah, you know what? We should probably change zero stars. It's Carson Wentz playoff wins. We don't have to anymore. He's back in the division. It's staying zero stars equals Carson Wentz playoff wins. One star, it's a small shred of truth. There's some elements here that make some sense, but... You know, don't get your hopes up there. Two stars means people are talking. It's firmly in that r rumor category. Three stars, pretty likely not a done deal. Not quite 100% done. It's not sold yet, but it's probably going to happen. Four stars was Zeke eating. It is Zeke eating, which might need to change at some point soon, but that means it is a done deal. So here was the athletics pitch from Greg Allman, or Omen, however you pronounce his last name. I'm actually not sure. It would likely take a mid-round pick to pry Schultz away from Dallas. Remember, they let receiver Amari Cooper go to the Browns for a fourth rounder and a late round pick swap. It's amazing. Every word of what you just said was wrong. It's not actually every word, but I wanted to make a last Jedi quote. But it was not a fourth round pick. And trading away Dalton Schultz for a mid to late round draft pick is a horrible deal for the Cowboys. If they were rebuilding then okay, we could have a different conversation. But this is a team, rightfully so, that views themselves as a playoff contender. The Athletic, by the way, also mentioned four years, $50 million as what it would likely cost. That was based on the Spotrack Spo extension projection. It's also not true because if Dalton Schultz was down to sign a deal worth roughly $12.5 million a year, I could actually see Dallas getting a deal done at that point. But it's not going to cost $12.5 million. Why would Schultz take a million and a half dollars less per year than what everybody else at the tight end market now with David Njoku resetting it, stabilizing it at? So I don't see this happening with the offer, the everything behind it. This idea is just not right. So in general, what would you do with Dalton Schultz? Would you trade him knowing... You know, if you even get a good pick back, you got nothing at tight end. Would you pay him, knowing you might be paying a good player great money? Or would you keep him for now, knowing you might lose him to free agency, although it would also probably net you a comp pick that would be more than what the Athletics suggested the Bucks give up? The likely outcome is keep for now. I don't think a deal is getting done. I don't see a trade happening at all. And I think the path here is this. Dalton Schultz, who... Probably going to be your number two leading receiver this year behind CeeDee Lamb with injuries at receiver, etc. Schultz has a big year. The Cowboys may or may not tag him again. It would be upwards of $12 million, almost 13 at that point. I believe that's the number. And they give time and buy time by keeping on the tag this year to see if a Jake Ferguson, to see if a Sean McEwen, or even a Jeremy Sprinkle can emerge as a viable option. Probably not so much on Sprinkle there. If they do... Awesome. If not, ah, you know, you can revisit the free agency and the draft market again next year. Now, today's show, like we mentioned, is made possible in part by Aura. They offer financial fraud protection, identity theft protection, and online and device security for you, up to five members of your family. I have a baby girl at home. Producer Jeremy has his dog, Sadie, and you can get your, uh, your information protected as well. Free 14-day trial at Aura.com slash chat sports. That link is going to be in the comment section and the description of today's video. So take advantage of it. It's a free trial. You can cancel at any time. So give it a shot. There's no downside. If you don't like it, then just cancel it. No harm, no foul. 14-day trial, Aura.com slash chat sports. Some more rumors here. Landon Collins to the Cowboys. A couple years ago, I would have been all for this. I am glad the Cowboys did not even try to win that bidding war because it's one star. Um, I don't view Collins as the guy that he was that best year in York when he was so good, Pro Bowl, all throw caliber year. Pro Football Network labeled the biggest need for each team. And for Dallas, they picked... Depth anywhere on defense. And they offered a solution, too. Signing Landon Collins, which 
is interesting. Collins did not remotely live up to his contract in Washington. And although it would continue the NFC East journey he's gone on, I don't actually know how impactful he would be for the Cowboys. A big pitch from PFN is that Collins would be able to play that kind of hybrid linebacker safety role that Keanu Neal, I'm going to say, was supposed to play. In the end, it was really J. Ron Curse who filled that. Here was PFN's pitch. Collins would fill a specific role as a hybrid safety linebacker taking the place of Keanu Neal, who signed with the Buccaneers. After spending the majority of his time in the box for Washington last year, Collins would have a similar job in Dallas. He'd be injury insurance for linebacker Leighton Van Der Esch and the Cowboys' safeties, and his presence would allow Micah Parsons to rush the passer more often. So it's a good pitch in terms of like filling the role, not sure it's the most sensible for Dallas, though, because of the player. So before we go more in-depth on this, name a free agent who you guys want to sign. I'd say keep it realistic, but given that the Cowboys have signed three players all year, feels like almost any player is uh, not realistic for the Cowboys. So drop a name for me in the comments section. I do think a linebacker is an area of focal point, but... That hybrid safety linebacker role was really filled by Jaron Curse. He's the one who did that. Now you've got Micah Parsons and Curse both getting linebacker reps. Hopefully Jabil Cox breaks out. I would be down to go look for somebody at linebacker. I don't think safety is that big of a need. I am ex obviously Curse is back. Billy Hooker outplayed Demonte Casey. Donovan Wilson's still there. He's still on this team. I am excited about young guys, Marquise Bell, Israel Mukwamu. The depth at safety is better than it's been in years. And although Collins' tackle numbers might look pretty good, he can't cover anymore. He can't do it. He really struggled, really struggled in coverage. And frankly, a big reason why he got cut beyond the contract was he didn't want to play that hybrid linebacker role. He thought he was a safety. So... I'd say pass on Landon Collins. Now, if the Cowboys actually sign somebody, we will do a video, I promise. So far, it's been James Washington and Dante Fowler an hour apart from each other, and then Ryan Nall, which was also on a different Friday. But we do Daily Cowboys videos anyway, live shows as well. So if you haven't already, hit that big red button and subscribe right now. Now, another free agent name that I know I already saw in the live chat is Anthony Barr. Two stars on this one. Bleacher Report predicted where all the top free agents left would sign. I am inclined to agree that I think Anthony Barr is a logical fit for the Cowboys, but they've got to actually do something before I go above two stars for any free agent ever again in this organization. There have been previous reports on Barr and the Cowboys, namely they've got interest if the price is right, which means if he's super cheap there. Injuries have begun to, to kind of add up a little bit uh, for Anthony Barr. I don't think he's going to be that expensive. It is almost July. If you're available in July, you're not going to cost more, in most cases, than $6 million bucks. There are some exceptions. Maybe Odell Beckham's one of them, but I don't think Barr is that. So if you could only sign one player, and let's say the contracts were similar, who would it be? Type LC for Landon Collins, or type in AB for Anthony Barr. This is the good AB. Get your votes in for me right now in the comment section. Here was the argument from Beach Report, which I agree pretty heavily with here. LVE is a long history of ailments. Jabril Cox coming up with a torn ace to limit him to just seven games as a rookie. Devontae Bond will be out for, the, for 2022 after suffering a knee injury at OTAs, even though Bond was not going to play anyway. And Damone Clark could miss a significant chunk of his rookie campaign as he works his way back from a neck issue. While a player like Barr, who has availability concerns of his own, may inject more risk into an already shaky linebacking core, the potential of Barr returning for to two form makes the risk worth it, especially if they can get the 30-year-old on a cheap deal. The Devontae Bond part isn't really that relevant because he wasn't going to play anyway, I don't believe. But I do think linebacker is the area I go, mm, I don't trust this group right now. You've got Parsons who's going to play that, hy that hybrid role. I am excited about Jabril Cox. Even though you only tend to use two linebackers, beyond that top three of Parsons, LV, and Jabril Cox, you've got UDFAs and Story Jackson, Aaron Hansford, a former UDFA who's really played real games, and Luke Gifford, and Devin Harper, a late-round draft pick. So 
I would be inclined to say I would like to add Anthony Barr, but I've just got to wait and see what ends up happening in terms of the Cowboys actually doing something in free agency. All right, back to our 4th of July question. Pick a 4th of July food to eat. D for hot dogs, B for burgers. Let's not do the sandwich bit again. Let's avoid it altogether. What? Let's, let's, just, let's just not go and fall back into old habits. I don't know what you're talking about, Tom. Good job. I'm, what are you, what are you referring to? Uh, exactly, exactly right. But I think something that can bring us all back together. You know, we were a little bit divided in the sandwich bit. Hating on MG in the comments? Yes. Uh, but besides that, guys, if you just first off, MG, I'm glad you're alive. Haven't seen you in a while. I uh, was worried about your health. Glad to see you're alive. Uh, if you guys just ignore him, he's just trolling. I th I think we can all agree though. Just ignore it. Bring us all back to because we were pretty split. You know, like half yeah. people thought it was a sandwich, half people didn't for the hot dog. I think we can all agree that hot dogs a million times better when they're grilled. Yes, hundred percent. Better than any, better yes. than any other way of cooking. It, it, it. Uh, yes. The yeah. the. Look, the microwave is quick and easy, but it's not that great. It, yeah. it tastes so much different. I mean, I, I, I saw Tom eat a hot dog out of the microwave like a couple of weeks ago. Didn't even chew. Just swallowed the thing whole. It's funny. Also, not <laughs> not true, but it's uh, fine. Uh, uh, that's still up for It, it is. Yeah, you can just make it up, I guess. <laughs> you just there. eats hot dog. It is. It is you, no, said, you, no. said, you, said, you said I didn't chew. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, okay, whatever. <laughs> D for hot dogs, B for burgers. Tony Tom, says pause, and you deserve Tom, that. Tom Jeremy. also dips his buns in water, just saying. Uh, that is not. That he is looks not up to Joey Chestnut, and he said, I swallow my dogs whole, and I dip my buns in water. All right, D for hot dogs, B for burgers. Coming up next, it is the Dallas Cowboys mailbag. Now, we already have some super chats in there. We got some super thanks from previous videos. We'll hit at the, off the top as well. So get your questions in now. We're only doing one mailbag. As long as there's super chats coming in, we'll just keep going on said mailbag. But get your questions in by super chatting or by using hashtag Cowboys to skip the line all together. Now, we're also going to stay live here on Rumble only. So if you're watching on Rumble right now, a couple of people already are, just stay there. After today's show wraps up on Facebook and on YouTube, Cowboys Report After Hours, I'm going to body some people out there who have suggested some horribly stupid ideas out there. Yeah, oh, Jeremy's buddies in the chat. Who, who is it? Evan, uh, that, that makes sense now that I see his comment there. So, all right. Stick around. Cowboys Report After Hours exclusively on Rumble. That link's in the live chat. It'll be in the comment section or the description, I should say, as well. But it's mailbag time coming up here on the Cowboys Report. You're watching the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey. It's a mailbag. We answer all of your questions for the most part on our live audience here at the Cowboys Report. But there were some uh, non-questions uh, we wanted to get to from Super Thanks that had come in. So we'll begin with those super thanks questions because I want to prioritize you guys as a thank you for donating to the channel. MLZ's video says Jeremy and Tom have to play each other in NCAA 14. The people want it. This is based on our previous debates. For the record, I would smoke Jeremy. I would. That is my game. I know all the all the tricks, all the tips. I would own him. But we're a show for the people. So who do you think wins? Like the video if you think I'm going to win, or you can type in J for Jeremy. This is democracy, Chugs. My, 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 this, is the, this is democracy. My, my boy's in the chat right now, so he can attest. Sports video games, Tom, you're going down. You're if, getting destroyed. If we play Madden, you will win. If, if we, we play any sports if game, If we play I win. 2K, you will smoke me. If we, NCAA? If we play Chell, you will win. If we play NCAA 14... I will win. I'm winning. No, no I will Tom, you're not winning. Absolutely. You're... Win that. I, I, sorry. I will destroy you. Do you have PS5 or Xbox, by the way? PS5. Or, 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 sorry, PS3 or Xbox, I guess, for that game. Oh, you don't have it anymore. That's right. That's why I'm going to win. Like the video if you think I would win NCAA 14 matchup. All right, Kyle Garnett next up here. Why didn't they keep – this is super thanks, by the way. Why didn't they keep Lyle Collins moving to left guard? He played there closer to the beginning of his career. Why not keep Lyle and fill a different need the first round of the draft? So there are several reasons in the end why they chose not to keep Collins – Part of it is they don't think he can bend the same way he used to. That hip, not 100%. I think they are worried about him having to play guard where the bend is a bit more important. They also did not trust him 
anymore. With the suspension, with the showing up to, uh, 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 to camp out of shape two years ago, leading to the hip injury or whatever led to the hip injury either way, they did not have faith anymore. So they did not trust Collins, and they didn't know if they could actually play guard the same way he did at the beginning of his career. Now, these questions came in via YouTube's Super Thanks feature. In the past, you could only donate via Super Chats on live shows. YouTube now has Super Thanks. You can donate outside of live videos. Click the Thanks icon, kind of above the comments, below the video part. It looks like that little heart with the dollar sign in the middle. If you do a Super Thanks, we will give you a shout-out here on the Cowboys Report. From Mighty Ant 0215 Tom's great, first off. Thank you. Uh, what would we owe Cedric Wilson, and what pick would we have to give up? And an apology, of course, yeah. Uh, he also mentions Marvin Jones is a red zone target, old I know. So let's start with the Marvin Jones side of things here. The Jags did overhaul their receiving room, but I think they're still banking on Jones being a key part of it. He has been a pretty good red zone threat, at least beyond last year, because that offense was an absolute disaster uh, in large part because nobody could catch and nobody could block and the coaching staff was a just garbage in the end. So I would not get my hopes up for a Marvin Jones trade. As for Cedric Wilson, eh, you know, probably wouldn't get my hopes up there either. He signed a three-year $22.5 or $05 million deal this offseason. Before the Tyreek Hill trade, Miami would save 2.75. The Cowboys would then owe three years, $19.05 million in total on that deal. Again, the, the saving in O's doesn't match because it's post-June 1st trade, so the numbers get kind of funky. But that is what the Cowboys would owe Cedric Wilson. I think they're still going to use him, so I wouldn't get my hopes up there. But would you trade for Cedric Wilson? Why for yes or and for let's say it was a... I'll go on the higher end. A fourth round pick in exchange for Cedric Wilson. A, a conditional fifth, maybe. Would you do it? Y for yes or N for no? This is the pinned comment. So if the ad break comes, take advantage of it and let me know what you would do. A lot of super chats. We'll try to go. Nah, we'll take our time. Savage505, who would you trade for right now? I don't know. Um, I would like to target a linebacker. If the Falcons eat some money for Deion Jones, I'd have interest there, but we know how the Cowboys operate. From Jimmy Productions, I feel like C.D. Lamb will be double teamed a lot next year because our receiving core is not good, especially early on. You're not going to have Gallup for at least a few games, most likely. I think we have to be patient with Jalen Tolbert, who I love, but we saw it took Gallup some time to adjust to life in the NFL. I am worried about that. For me, it was never about, can Lamb replace Cooper? It's, who do you replace the receiver two and three with? Because you lost Wilson and Cooper. Like I think Lamb can be a one, but the supporting cast took a big-time step backwards. So I get where you're coming from there, Jimmy. From Tyler Klutz's burner account, assuming both have great years, who would you pay first, Diggs or Lamb? Hmm. I think I would lean toward. Mm, I, I think I'd lean towards Diggs because I don't have the extra fifth year that I have for Lamb, which impacts my ability to prioritize it. Like I, I have more time for Lamb, but I would also be worried about the receiving market being moved even further. I don't think the corner one's going to change that drastically, but I do want to pay Diggs before AJ Terrell gets the bag and others of his draft class. So I guess I'll go Diggs first. The Cowboys Board is also on Rumble. Someone comments, you should have your own podcast. Well, the show is the podcast. I don't need to say the same things twice. But if you want to listen to the show, podcast style, Rumble is perfect. You can do it audio only in the background, which you can't really do on YouTube. So go follow us, rumble.com slash Cowboys TV. And remember, we put exclusive content up there, part of After Hours and uncensored videos as well. From Lance Dunbar's burner account. Who says no? Let's give Tampa Tristan Hill for a roster bubble wide receiver. Brashad Perryman, Jalen Darden, Cyril Grayson, Scotty Miller. One of them's going to get cut, right? You are absolutely correct that one of those guys is going to get cut. You also may have just explained why you don't need to do it. Because if they're going to get cut, then you don't have to trade somebody. And the, the savings between trading away Tristan Hill and cutting him is pretty even. 
I don't know if Tampa would want Hill. If they do, I'm down because it just secures my guy. I don't have to go through the, the waiver wire process. But I think Tampa is a good team to keep an eye out for for extra receiver depth. They got too many guys. By the way, Cyril Grayson, don't forget, Cowboys practice squad legend. From Mark, Super Chat, sucks how we got so little for Coop and Collins. They did, they did not play the Amari Cooper situation right. They, they botched that from the beginning, and they hurt themselves in the process. Lyle Collins, I was kind of, they handled that better. They leaked their possible trade because they weren't getting good offers for him. From Jeremy Shaver, a.k.a. the cool Jeremy. Love the show, Tom. Listening from work. Go Cowboys and a hot dog on a bun is not a sandwich. I'm not, don't, don't go to it, Jeremy. We're not going to go any further, but I do think Jeremy is, is right. From Evan Berryman. Now, this, this, this is nepotism, Jeremy. He says Schultz is a borderline top five tight end. Pr Production-wise, he was, though, last year. So, uh, look, we can pull up all the top tight ends in the NFL if you want to have some fun here, Jeremy. Because I, I don't think anyone in their right mind is taking him over Travis Kelsey, over George Kittle, over Mark Andrews, Darren Waller. I would include Kyle Pitts and maybe TJ Hawkinson in that conversation. Dallas Goddard. Maybe. And Goddard's probably in there, too. Goddard's better than And Schultz. then Schultz. So that puts him at what, Eight. So it's not kind of borderline, kind of not. I, but he is. I, I, I think eight's about where I would put him. I do think you can make an argument for maybe seven, maybe. But he's if, not if, actually top if, five. If he put up the exact same numbers as he did last year, this year, would you call him a top five receiver? I still don't think consistency two I years in a row. I still don't think it's going to be top five because I because we've seen guys like Pitts in one year and Kelsey, Kittle, Andrews, etc., and Waller when he's getting targeted properly, put up that production. So. I don't have him top five. I think he's top ten. But I think there is a pretty big tier break behind those true top five guys and kind of your second tier of I, very I, good tight ends. I, I, not a jag, but like a little bit better than a jag. He's good, but he's not great. That's, and you, do, you, do you want to pay great money to a good player? That's the issue. Good tagline, Tom. That's a, that's a Stephen Jones tagline. He gets credit for that thing at least. Elise Penn, who's got more to prove, Dak or Zeke? I think it's really straightforward. It's Zeke, because if Zeke does not play this play that well this year, he's gone. He's not going to come back at this point. So I would definitely say that Zeke has the most to prove uh, on that standpoint in terms of just value and everything from that perspective. All right, Samuel Duran, Duran, Durant, about to get traded. He's next up here. Could you give fantasy draft grades for Lamb, Dak, Zeke? Pollard and Schultz. Much love. All right. Um, I guess I can give that a shot here. Uh, let's go with Dak, and I'll just focus position-wise here. Prescott is probably going to be in that mid to mid-ish tight QB1 position where I don't like drafting quarterbacks early outside of two QB leagues because I can get Burrow, Brady, Russ, Dak, a Lance, even a Matthew Stafford, I can get that guy late, so I don't like drafting uh, quarterbacks early. I still think Zeke is ahead of um, ahead of Tony Pollard in terms of the value. I would not take Zeke in the first round. Uh, I don't know if I take him in the second round that much either. I think he at this point is probably going to be more of a third, fourth round pick. Pollard, I think, has extra value in PPR leagues. Um, but again, you're talking like barely top 100 guy there. Schultz, I think, is a pretty safe pick as a top 10 tight end. Uh, kind of right where we had him, I think, for, for the, the overall tight end conversation. Probably somewhere in that 7, 8, 9 range. Um, but again, you don't want to reach on him from that perspective. Overall, oh, Lamb. Forgot about Lamb. Uh, hoping he has a breakout year. Uh, I think he could maybe a top 10 fantasy tight end this year in terms of his impact on that standpoint. From IC, would you trade Anthony Brown for a starter at another position? It's a good question. Um, it depends on the position and how good of a starter I am getting. I, I want to say yes, but I, I can't trust Kelvin Joseph right now. Um, if Joseph had emerged last year 
and didn't have his off-the-field issues, I think this would make a lot of sense because you've got depth there, and I like trading depth at one spot. We, we'd still be fine to help another position. But right now, I feel like I'd be creating a concern to fill another concern, and I, and I don't want to do that. Anthony Brown, by the way, was good last year. I think this might be his last year in Dallas because I kind of think someone, if he plays like he did last year, is going to throw the uh, Brown a little bit more money what the Cowboys want to give him. But outside of the Bucks game and the uh, officiating disaster that was the Raiders game, he was awesome last year. He played really well as a cornerback, too. And I know that not everyone agrees with that. This is a democracy. This is your chance to vote. Do you like Anthony Brown as cornerback number two? Type L for you like it, or type in H for you hate it. This is an incredible super chat. From Tyler Klutz's burner account. Pick a receiving core. Lucky Whitehead, Dwayne Harris, Terrence Williams, or Devin Street, Bryce Butler, Ryan Switzer. Give me the first grouping of Dwayne Harris, Lucky Whitehead, and Terrence Williams in large part because by a significant margin, Terrence Williams is the best receiver on that group. Now, he fell off quick, and he had bad drops, but he was at least productive. No one else on that list was productive for the Cowboys outside of special teams impact. Dex in third. CD odds to lead the, 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 I think, the NFL in receiving yards is plus 1,200 while the doubt go Cowboys. Um, because from a volume perspective, I don't know if it's going to be there. And you've got a lot of great receivers in the NFL. Frankly, if, if that is for the NFL, if it's plus 1,200, um, I am totally on board with, with that being the overall odds. If it's for the Cowboys, I do not understand why it would be so low. That's easy money at that point. From Jace, what about a Tristan Hill trade? Uh -huh, that's the issue, right? Um, who wants him? I don't see any real value right now for Tristan Hill. This is a player who was... Has, has not ever been good in his time in the NFL. Uh, there's been maturity issues. There's been availability issues. There is talent. Don't get me wrong. That's very clear. We've seen flashes occasionally, but multiple regimes in terms of like the defensive coaching staffs were like, we'll give him a shot. Eh, don't love it. So I would say if you could get anything for him, awesome. But I think a cut might be more likely. Now, what would you do with Tristan Hill? Type K for you'd keep him, or type in D for you would dump him, whether it's cut or trade. Sound off for me in the comment section. From King Shadow 24, I've heard little rumblings that Diggs is still a good receiver. Chinsley gets receiver snaps in camp in the event of minor injuries. If it is minor injuries in camp, no. Uh, I think they would be far more inclined to give the UDFA's chances. Now, if we get to the season and they are decimated at receiver all of a sudden, or if they've got major injuries, at that point, I could actually see it happening, but I don't think they want to run the risk of Diggs getting hurt on offense when he's probably not going to play that position in a game that actually matters. If you enjoy our Cowboys Report mailbags, thank you. Subscribe. We do these as part of our live shows every Thursday here on the Cowboys Report. So hit that big red button right now. The lunatic, more likely Gallup back in late September or Pollard's touches go up. There is the report from Todd Archer that Gallup is going to be back in late September and he don't miss, but I think Pollard's touches will go up. I am going to speak that one into existence. And finally from Boondock Saint, Tom, did Mark Cuban pull a Stephen Jones with Jalen Brunson? You know, as we sit here filming this, it is on the eve of NBA free agency, so hot ticker cold take coming up. Uh, he's gone. He's not. He's going to the Knicks. Like I think the I think the meetings are designed to avoid tampering. Um, it's a question of how much you want to pay Brunson. So, do you want to give him twenty five, twenty three, thirty million dollars? Not so sure. I also I do I will say this. In the sense of, of Stephen Jones botching early negotiations, regardless of where Brunson signs, yeah, you could have got him at what was it, four fifty-five, not that long ago. You messed that one up pretty badly. Super chat coming in late here from Dallas Young. How much value should you put in the first two games of the year with them being two difficult games? Um, 
you know, you put it for about two seventeenths, somewhere in that range. They are important, make no mistake, but season's not over either way. Uh, it's a good benchmark of what this team's talent is, but you're not going to be 100% for those first two games. So just don't freak out, but it's fine to be concerned or hyped one way or the other. If we did not get to your question, hey, my DMs are open on Twitter. Hit me up on what at what going downy. Slide on in if you have any questions at all, and we'll just blame producer Jeremy for not uh, getting your questions up on screen. I want you guys to shout out your city for me in the live chat. Oh, we're, oh, oh, we are tight. We're eight dollars away from shots here. If you do a super chat, we'll hit it before we end the live stream on YouTube. Going to be incredible timing, by the way, Jeremy, because we'll kick it right over to M to NBA now for uh, the live start of free agency, which will be chaotic. So shout out your city, Luis Rodriguez in San Antonio, Joe Linden, Jacksonville, Boondocks. We're eight, we're eight dollars away from uh, from a drink. So yeah, eight dollars away from from some shots, baby. For a drink, drink. Uh, Oxnard from King Shadow. You're gonna go to camp. It'll be fun. If I assume you are. Lancaster, PA, from Nate, San Antonio, from the the. Uh, originally from Thexton Third, now lives in Virginia Beach, uh, Laredo, Spyro, Oklahoma. I don't know where, where Spyro is. I've not heard of that. Isn't that that old video game? Uh, yeah, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> kind of, I guess. St. Paul, Newport News, which is in, I think that's in Virginia too. Gary, we sure. Gary, we hit it at the top of the of the mailbag. Yeah, we hit it. Oh, wait, no, we didn't. At the top? No, because we, we, we went to the, the super things. Gary's, I, you're, Gary's right, we forgot to hit it. We'll hit it right now, Gary. You're right. Thank you for calling us out on that. We, we definitely did not hit that one. Tom messed me up. That's I it. did not mess you up. Here was Gary's question. Keep McCarthy as head coach, hire Peyton as GM, and Quinn for D coordinator. I don't see Sean Peyton, if he comes back, going, yeah, I'll be a GM. I, I think if you want Sean, Gary, you've got to make him your head coach. Um, I don't think GM is what he wants to do. I don't know how good he'd be at it. He had a GM in New Orleans. I think it's got to be head coach. So I'm sorry we missed your super chat, Gary. You're right. My bad. Here it Tom's is. Tom's bad. Maybe. You know what, you know what we'll Tom's do? Tom's bad. Remind me, Jeremy. We will bring it up on next week's mailbag, too. That way we, we, we okay. make it up for you, Gary. Um, so if you want Sean, I think it's got to be his head coach. City. Uh, Dallas, Texas. I see Mississippi. Quick, quick question for Jeremy Shaver. I see you're from Athens, Texas. I know someone from Athens, Texas. Small town in Texas. Okay. Want to want to see if this theory is true? If everybody in small towns know each other, do you know uh, somebody by the name of Caroline Perryman? Hmm. If you do, then you live in a small hey, town. How do but uh, How do you know her, Jeremy? We went to uh, We went to school together. Oh, okay. Nice. <laughs> we uh, We learned. Things. You learn things uh, about... Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> all right, so that's your city. We'll get back on track here. Again, $8 away, we will bust out God. some shots if, if we get there. If we get there. Doesn't know him. Sad. Doesn't know him. Sad. Mm. Must maybe, have, maybe Jeremy but made her up. Who knows? The, the booming town of Athens, Texas is too big for the both of them. I, I, I had not heard of Athens, Te Athens, Texas until just now. W where is it at? Relative to um, It's south here, and then I think you go west. Oh, of course you do. <laughs> course i think so i mean that would make sense there uh washington franklin virginia i think that's about all the shout outs we're gonna get there jeremy oh uh rutherfordton north carolina oh good old rutherfordton yeah chattanooga i got someone in canada too from An An anthony thank you J just At a reminder though eight dollars away yeah eight dollars away we'll rip some shots here we do it for 69 because it's funny and for 169 and every every every, every 69 bench par benchmark yeah because it's fun Anyway, uh, we will be live after our upcoming segment exclusively on Rumble. Also, we've got an Oxford, Ohio from uh, Nook House, which is where I went to school. Uh, after today's <coughs> show wraps Ooh. up, we'll kill this on YouTube, kill it on Facebook, the stream at least. YouTube, if you're kill watching it. only on YouTube, it's going to redirect you to our live NBA coverage on Chat Sports, but the Cowboys coverage will continue exclusively on Rumble. Rumble.com slash Cowboys TV. My boy Patrick has the link to that Rumble stream in the comment section. I already see Bobby Hass in there saying Tristan Hill is trash, and he's not wrong because Hill has not been very good. So make sure you head over there after the upcoming segment wraps up. We are live right now on Rumble as well. 
but make sure you're in there for the exclusive segment coming up in just a little bit. Cowboys training camp is roughly a month away, a little bit less. The exact schedule actually just came out. And if you want in-depth Cowboys training camp coverage from us here at the Cowboys Report, show it by liking this video right now. I assume you do, but you know what happens when you assume. So help make sure that my assumption is correct by liking today's video right now. We're taking a look at 10 players on the roster bubble for the Cowboys today. Offense and on defense. Focusing on more of the notable names because nobody cares if the third string, fourth string UDFA at receiver gets cut because, you know, no one's heard of them. First up, a player who has made the roster in the past, Rico Dowdle. The running back, this is one we mentioned when ESPN left him off the 53-man roster projection. I like him. He has flashed more in the preseason, offers some kick return value if you need him to, but he missed last year due to hip injury, and he had the uh, knee scope this year. That makes it a little bit tricky. His very limited time in an actual game setting, seven carries, 24 yards, touchdown. Tough to make a real sample size on seven carries, but it's a name to keep an eye on given the Cowboys, it seems, are quite high on not just Jaquan Hardy, but also Malik Davis, who they uh, added as a UDFA out of Florida, brought him in for a pre-draft visit even. So keep an eye on Dowdle and if he can get going in camp or if he's not going in camp. If he's, if he's missing time, that hurts him. Next up is Ryan Nall, and I'm going to leave him as HB as opposed to running back or fullback, he's a halfback, H-back, because I don't know what he does um, for this team. Uh, maybe he's going to be with Nick Ralston, but he's not really a full-fledged running back. He's not really a full-fledged fullback. He's just kind of a special teamer type of guy. Now, he's signed in free agency, and I have not actually seen the guaranteed amount. I don't know if there even is any, but it appears it was for the vet minimum with probably very little guaranteed. And given the fact that he's done... Nothing in his NFL career. Maybe that's not a huge surprise. Nine catches, 71 yards. He fits kind of that fullback tight end blend that I think Mike McCarthy likes a decent amount. But if he makes the team, it's probably going to be over Nick Ralston and not that impactful. But because he was one of, double checks notes, three total free agents outside of the organization that the team signed, I did want to make sure that we put him on there. So name a player who you guys want to cut. Is it a Rico Dowdle or Ryan Nall? Make sure it is a noteworthy player. Drop that name for me in the comment section. This one is notable. Simi Feoko, the fifth round pick out of Stanford last year who made no impact on the team as he was in a redshirt season. He is going to have to earn his roster spot this year. Even in the event that, let's say, Michael Gallup misses time and is placed on the pup list to begin the season, the Cowboys have competition at wide receiver. They've got CeeDee Lamb, Jalen Tolbert. With Washington's contract being fully guaranteed, I think he's going to make the team. Noah Brown, Vasher, Dennis Houston has flashed. Other UDFAs of note. Fehoko has to earn that spot. I think he can. But there is a scenario which it comes down to Fehoko and Vasher especially if the Cowboys feel like they need Noah Brown for special teams. Vasher and Fayoko haven't done special team stuff so far. So I wanted to focus on Fayoko among Vasher, and Noah Brown is also in this conversation as a possible notable cut. But pick a receiver. Who would you rather have on the Cowboys roster if you had to keep one? TJ for TJ Vasher, SF for Simi Fayoko. This is the pinned comment on today's show. So if the ad break comes on YouTube, perfect timing. Take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. Josh Ball is next up here. This is not someone I thought we'd be talking about after a year as being on the roster bubble. There's been some good insight from Bobby Belt and Brian Broaddus about where he's at, and it's not good. Uh, apparently, the weight room habits have not been great. He had, an, in theory, a chance last year to reshape his body. Sounds like that hasn't happened. And the practice performances have also not been great. That's troubling for a fourth-round pick with off-the-field concerns. If the Cowboys think Matt Let's Go can be a swing or at least a backup option at tackle, and they feel good about Tyler Smith, 
I could see a scenario in which Ball gets cut. I still think he makes the team. I think he's on the right side of the roster bubble, but I don't like hearing the negative things about a fourth-round pick already. So of the two options, what do you think will happen with Josh Ball this year? Type M for he makes the roster, or type C for he gets cut. Make your predictions for me in the comments section. What will happen with Josh Ball this upcoming season? Tristan Hill, as we move to defense now. This one makes a lot of sense, right? Former second-round pick has not remotely lived up to expectations. He has been a colossal disappointment so far. The cap savings, if traded or cut, you save $1.16 million. That is a significant-ish amount of money, and it would be cutting your losses at this point of you just haven't gotten remotely what you wanted. 18 career games over three years. He's got two tackles for loss and a half sack. That ain't good. It's not good. And you've got Oso Odegizua, Neville Gallimore, Carlos Watkins. We'll get to him in a second. Quinton Bohanna and John Ridgway. And I think you might see more than even I initially thought of Chauncey Golston at the defensive tackle spot. And that's a three technique. And you've got Osa and Gallimore who can play that role. You're not going to carry four of those players if you make Golston a full-time spot there, or at least a hybrid main-time spot there. So what would you do with Tristan Hill? Type K for keep, or you can type in D for dump. While you're down there in the comments section answering that question, make sure you click the link to our Rumble page, rumble.com slash Cowboys TV. We are also on Rumble. If you want to be able to play our videos kind of more podcast style in the background, audio only, and do other stuff on your phone, you can do that on Rumble. Give us a follow for free, rumble.com slash Cowboys TV. Carlos Watkins next up here, the defensive tackle, who I do think makes this team, but the Cowboys have not locked him in for a roster. He's on the right side of the bubble. He says he was a solid rotation piece this past year, Dion Tackle. Exceeded my own expectations for him. But only 152000 of his over $1 million deal is guaranteed. That contract is indicative of someone who has to earn his spot again. Watkins played better than what I thought he was going to last year. But if Tristan Hill balls out, if you feel great about Ridgeway and Bohanna this year, I could see Dallas going, you know what? We can just move on from Watkins and focus on the youth instead. I think he makes the team. And I think he makes it over Tristan Hill too. But if you could only pick one to keep, who would it be? Type CW for Carlos Watkins or TH for Tristan Hill. The big splashy free agent signing, Dante Fowler? Yes, he is on here. And again, a big reason why is the contract. Unlike the fully guaranteed deal for James Washington, Dante Fowler is not guaranteed that much money. Now, he could very well fight for a starting spot, but only $1 million of his $2.91 million deal, which is going to count on the cap right now, is guaranteed. So that is a cuttable contract. Well, the things that would have to happen is Lawrence balls out. He's healthy. Dorrance Armstrong steps up. Sam Williams looks great. Golston plays some edge. You want to use Parsons as a hybrid player, and you decide, you know what, maybe Basham's our guy, or you go light at defensive end. It also depends on which Dante Fowler you get. Uh, the Jags 2017, pretty good. Rams 2019, really good. Rest of his career, those other four seasons, not that great, Jim. So because of that, you have to wait and see which Dante Fowler you get. His contract does not promise him a spot. Now, I know the offseason is very much slowing down, but we are not. We're still doing daily Dallas Cowboys videos, so if you haven't already, hit that big red button and subscribe right now. Another defensive end here, Terrell Basham, and this one is maybe the one I feel most confident saying, he ain't going to make this team. He is a backup option at defensive end, and you can save over half of his $3 million that's due on the salary cap this year. You save $1.75 million. You cut him, you move on. Makes some sense, doesn't it? Because Basham's upside is capped. You know, on a good year, he'll get you four or five sacks. 
Like, that's just not, that's not valuable enough when you're just looking for a replacement level type of player. And at this point, I kind of think we can safely say that is what Terrell Basham is. So hypothetically, if it comes down to these two guys, pick one to keep. Type in DF for Dante Fowler or TB for Terrell Basham. I'm keeping Fowler, but we're a show for the people. So I want to hear from you guys right now in the comment section. Next up, cornerback Nashawn Wright. And I am, to be honest, surprised that I am including him on here because I am not out on him already as a you know, former third-round pick. But the Athletic put Nashawn Wright in a roster bubble battle at the cornerback spot. And my boy John doesn't miss very often, if ever. So I think we have to include him on here, even though I think he makes the team. Third-round pick from a year ago, historically speaking, the Cowboys do not often give up on draft picks that early. Now, I know they like Deron Bland. I want to hype him up a little bit. They've got Kelvin Joseph, Jordan Lewis, Anthony Brown, and, of course, Trayvon Diggs. They could go six deep at corner. I would be surprised and troubled if they cut Nashawn right because that was a Dan Quinn pick, and I don't want him to be wrong on that one. Finally, safety Israel Mukwamu, who, again, I like the player. I was He was really good in the preseason relative to expectations, a player that I actually had graded higher than I had Nashawn Wright graded when, when he came out. But for the first time ever, the Cowboys have real depth at safety. They go deeper than what they normally go, and that's a big deal at the safety position, unlike, say, linebacker with just Jabril Cox from that depth perspective. You've got J. Ron Curse. You've got Malik Hooker. Donovan Wilson, we thought last year he was going to be safety one. Now look at where they're at. You've also got UDFAs I like. Marquis Spell, I am hyped about him. Wanye Thomas offers some good ability and even some special teams value. Tyler Coyle, he might make some plays for you. So because of that, depending on how deep you go at like corner, for a player that doesn't offer you special teams value right now, you got to earn that spot if you are Mukwamu. Now, do you trust the Dallas Cowboys front office? Y for yes, N for no. Get your opinions in for me in the comments section. We did it, by the way, as MG continues to troll, and Churcho Nation's also having some fun on the same thing there. Y for yes, N for no. Do you trust the Shaw Cowboys ton, front office? Shaw ton, I see Shaw Ken Reed ton. calling the Tyron Smith contract a cap killer. It's absolutely not. That Tyron Smith contract has been, I would argue, it's one of the best contracts Dallas has ever given Tell out. Tell him, Tom. And it has been so ridiculously team-friendly. Yeah. Get at him. So, so team-friendly. We'll, yeah. Which we'll spend some more time on Tyron Smith, by the way, as part of Cowboys Report after hours um, in a little bit. My, my, up, my buddy who's watching texted me, a hot dog is a sandwich. Okay, well, your buddy's wrong. I'm sorry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> buddy is, he goes to a different school, but, you know, he's wrong. All right, buddy. A lot of no's coming in, by the way. Uh, shout out to Boondock Saint, by the way, for the $10 super chat, getting us to the $69 amount, meaning it is time to... Do the shots. We got the jack. All right, bring it on up here, Chugs. There we go. Every time we get $69 in Super Chats here on the Cowboys Report, we do shots because it is we are immature and drinking's fun. Thank you. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't bring my shot glass this time. That's okay. He should have done one, too. How's it going, Jeremy? Yeah, uh, I just realized my, the screen is kind of green. Screen. Yeah, I mean, it's bit. it's not that bad. It, 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 it's... Uh, yeah, it's it's better than I thought it would be, honestly. Um, it's like it's 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 only partially, partially transparent. Like you can kind of see through you a little bit. Dude, are you a ghost? Do you, you want to go too, Patrick? Yeah, come on up, come on up. He said, "Don't leave me up." Jack or fireball. All right, here you go. Oh, a little Jack. Yeah. Yeah, I'll I'll scoot you over so you can get on the screen too. This is Patrick. He was the one. If you want to slide into the screen frame here. He's new and he was also running the uh, the community today, so. Bottoms up, 69 in Super Chats. Cheers. Go Cowboys. 
Thanks for getting the, sh the shots for us, buddy. No, no, bad Jeremy. Bad Jeremy. You don't say that on this show. You don't say that. You don't say that. You don't say that. You're right. All right, so what's going to happen here is this, folks. We are going to end our live stream here on YouTube and on Facebook. What's going to happen is if you're watching on YouTube, you're going to be redirected to our NBA Now coverage of free agency. The uh, legal tampering period just opened up. Uh, excuse me, I should say it's going to open up in an hour. Also, uh, the Mavs meeting with Jalen Brunson, canceled. He gone! Brunson's gone. Coop rolling in his grave. I Coop, we, we got Jeffrey Cooper seen here, big, big Mavs fan. His dad, his dad uh, is, is Chuck Cooper. Chuck, yeah. Um, he had kind of like got himself excited about, ooh, the, they might get him. I told him, no, it wasn't going to happen. This this was just the this was just the the Brunson camp and the Knicks camp trying to be like oh he's not gonna leave he, you know no tampering happened he gone in my, six six oh one Eastern time he's out of here in Booking. my best in my best coop voice uh, integrity he said no way Jalen Brunson leaves the Mavericks <laughs> no way true. All right, we'll go ahead and get, things, get this thing killed here on YouTube and on Facebook. Remember, Cowboys Report After Hours exclusively on Rumble. Say bye, Facebook. Uh, I, I think uh, a couple people said that uh, I think it was Patrick looks like Jason Garrett. By the I way. can see that. I can see it. I, I haven't thought about that before, but yeah. All right, say bye, yeah. bye YouTube. Yeah. All right, bye, YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, click the link in the live chat, get over to Rumble, or if you want the NBA coverage, you'll be automatically redirected to the NBA Now stream on Chat Sports. So see you, Facebook.